we go. The seventh generation of games was home to a few controversial design trends, not the least of which was the cover-based shooter. For those of you who've been living under a chest-high wall for the last decade, the cover mechanic slid onto the scene with 2003's Kill Switch, but it really found its limited footing with the smash hit Gears of War some three years later. Taking cover may have played a role mostly for peeking around corners in Metal Gear Solid and Splinter Cell, but these later titles made it much more integral to the game as a whole. Snuggle up to some rubble where you're given a truckload of options, mainly two, moving back and forth along a one-dimensional plane and popping out for some target practice. And as riveting as that sounds, it's caught some flack over the years for being a glorified whack-a-mole, with a little to it other than just… yeah. This routine swamped shooters that whole generation, but now, with more games trying to distance themselves from this mechanic, let's take a look back and discuss how cover mechanics ruined shooters. For the time, implementing a cover system made some sense. Aside from realism, cover systems generally mesh with a few other aspects of more modern design. Hitscan weapons, lack of mobility, and regenerating health. Mark Brown of Game Maker's Toolkit once made a point how counteracting instant high damage guns with automatic health recovery makes some sense. But unless there's a way to reliably avoid damage, you won't be getting any health back. You need some kind of safe environment to allow health to recover. But even more so, without wanting to start a war, it's important that we recognise this. If third-person shooters were going to succeed on consoles, they'd need to jump the hurdle that was aiming with this thing. Without the intuition of aiming with a pointer, it's much easier to over or undershoot a target, because camera movement is based on how long you hold the stick in a direction for. So unless you're dealing with large projectile weapons or some hefty lock-on, taking shots while moving around at the same time is a bit fiddly. A lot of games deal with this with some generous auto-aim or bullet magnetism, but you could go one step further. Just cut out movement from the equation. By giving peeps a safe zone where you can pick out prey without putting yourself in danger, a lot of the frustration is gone. There's still a real gameplay loop in that you have to manage your time in the open to not die, but it's almost entirely a timing test rather than a strenuous aiming exercise at the same time. You're given almost as much time as you need to kick back, relax, have a coffee and sort out a vague aiming zone before putting yourself in danger. So what's the issue? It sounds pretty simple. Well, that's the problem. It's so bare bones, a skeleton of a mechanic that only exists because it has to work with other elements, not because it increases the complexity of the game. By cutting off the player's legs, you inherently reduce the skill ceiling, limiting the number of variables the player has to consider at once. The system is slow, but not tactical. Harder difficulties don't necessitate more clever use of cover because there's so little to the mechanic. You just have to pop up for much shorter intervals. It's less about avoiding fire altogether than managing how much you can take at a given time before you duck back down. That sounds fine, and like a refreshing change, but there's barely any decision making to this. If you've taken a lot of damage, it's objectively better to shrink back into cover. You'll only ever risk another shot because you don't want the boredom of sitting there and waiting for your health to return. It's why games like Uncharted are actually a lot more fun on lower difficulties. My boy Nova Canoe put it best in his video, saying that on easy you actually get to move around and use mechanics with each other, unlike on normal difficulty where the high damage hit scan bullets make finding one slam of rock objectively the best option. Crushing isn't some hardcore lads mode as much as it is just tedious. There's nothing challenging or rewarding about hiding behind a piece of cover for a longer time, like there is with moving around and shooting dudes and ducking hits at the same time, and systems like these actively discourage that more dynamic playstyle. On top of this, the mechanic can also sometimes feel quite clunky. Not only because it restricts your movement, but sometimes, frankly, the controls are a bit odd. Certain games like Binary Domain made the genius choice to place dodge and cover on the same button, which might sound consistent, I mean, they're both methods of avoiding fire, but it can make a big difference when you're scrambling to get back into cover only to end up rolling around taking more hits. What if I want to roll in the general direction of cover just to move faster? Well now it's a toss up whether I get stopped in my tracks, because the brake pedal is also the accelerator. Gears of War had a similar problem, with the A button being used for every 
everything. But 3 onwards had the right idea, giving cover its own dedicated button. When the entire point is to evade fire, making that quick and not muddled with other mechanics should be a big priority. Nevertheless, even having magnetic cover is an important consideration as well. In a cover shooter, you're almost always going to be heading to the next piece of rubble at breakneck speed anyway. But in a stealth game that relies on cover, the whole point isn't just making sure the coast is clear, but then managing to sneak your way to the next bit of safety without being noticed. So games like The Last of Us and the new Deus Exes have cover just as something to hide in, but they're not automated, you still gotta do the legwork yourself. On the flip side, you got Splinter Cell Blacklist where it's a bit dull. Yeah, I don't know how this game keeps sneaking into my videos. Cause you can tap A to get Sam dashing to the next hiding spot, there's little to consider other than just if someone's watching. But as said, in a fast paced shooter, you wanna glide into shelter at a moment's notice, cause that's your main method of evading attacks. Forgotten Zack Snyder film Quantum Break had a strange auto cover mechanic, where as soon as you're close to cover, Jack will crouch. But because it's not done manually, it can get a little fiddly making sure you're actually in cover. You have a power that shoots you across the map in a New York minute. It would be nice to know if I'm falling into safe hands or not. It's hard to tell if I can't do it myself. At the very least, give me a dedicated crouch button. It's not like I need this skip. You got DeLoreans in your shoes there, Jack? But it gets even worse when games actively sabotage their movement to encourage cover. Max Payne 3 may have made a return to the OG style bullet time, but they are far from the same game. Running speed has been greatly reduced, so even with bullet time, you're not going to pull off any Neo maneuvers now that Mr. Payne moves like a fridge on legs. On top of this, there's some butters landing lag with the bullet dodge. Compared to his first outing, Max the Third gets back on his feet like a washed up drum. Oh god, I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have said that. No longer do fights involve frantically darting around, that's too risky now. This gimped movement means you either utilise the cover system, or memorise enemy placements to the point that you pop headshots immediately. It's not like it's just Max Payne 1, but it happens to have cover. Plugging in a mouse and keyboard doesn't magically fix this issue, because the game's been fundamentally changed to suit rote memorization or cover usage. These games are built around cover, running and gunning is discouraged because it just just isn't viable. I mean, the only way to run is often by sprinting, and you can't do that sideways like some firearms toting crab, but it's made even worse because even strafing is slower than strolling forwards. Gears, Binary Domain, and some others get around this a little bit by having an actual dodge button, as well as Gears of War's pretty rapid cover slide, and I gotta say, the way you slam into cover has a real nice thud to it. Makes it feel pretty good to get in and out of danger at a moment's notice in comparison to the slow, clunky cover of Spec Ops. But oh boy, if you want to see how over-reliance on cover can kill a game, look no further than The Order 1886. This game's much-deserved infamy is largely over its incessant attention-seeking from a cinematic story, one that would rake in as many Oscars as a real film based on a video game. But its super-minimal gameplay shows just how boring this mechanic is by itself. I'd say most of these games try to compensate with some kind of neat mechanic. Binary Domain has locational damage, Gears of War has the active reload, even Spec Ops the bloody line has extremely simple squad commands, and sand mechanics that show up as often as a positive comment in this video. But The Order is just a cover shooter from top to bottom. Some games have just one main mechanic, but they're versatile enough to carry a title without chucking in a bunch more nonsense. But cover mechanics are restrictive by nature, so when you isolate them like this, it becomes apparent just how little you can do with it. Even being in cover is awful, you get the tightest camera angle so your situational awareness is totally screwed. I don't need to see my guy this close, we get it, you made graphics. Hell, at least some of these games have a dodge button. Oh yeah, sorry, dodge rolls are too unrealistic for this setting, so you can only do it when a werewolf tells you to. <sighs> sure, fine, it's a different kind of game. But if even the most hectic scenarios don't promote any higher skill, or more interesting decision making than more classically designed shooters, then that argument doesn't hold much water. It's just so weird, like the whole point in cover is to get some refuge from a firefight, right? It feels like, if anything, it should be a break in the combat to catch your breath, not the gameplay. The mistake is thinking that it can carry a title alone. Very few games use it for any real advantage. I'd say that we've got to be able to do better, some way to take this and improve. But goddammit we can, cause there's a certain game called Vanquish.
Yeah, sure, the game has cover, but unlike many of these titles, it doesn't deliberately gimp its movement to force players to use this banal mechanic. Nah nah nah, Vanquish's cover system, for all intents and purposes, is not mandatory. A fool and his cover aren't easily parted, sure, but the funky moves like the slide and fast dodges let anyone with enough skill get by relatively unscathed and enjoy a much cooler experience. But even with this super fast pace, this once 30 FPS console exclusive still doesn't shoot itself in the foot, cause the mostly optional slow-mo mechanic gives players an inherent leg up. Yeah, what's your excuse, Rockstar? Speaking of Remedy properties that got screwed, Remedy's Quantum Break is almost like a discount vanquish. As the game goes on and you get more powers and upgrade, it relies less on cover than a lot of these games. You even get a time shield that negates running off and hiding, but it's no vanquish. Your powers are on a stricter limit and just moving around feels a lot clunkier, so you'll definitely be using cover a bit more. I mean, in all fairness, in Vanquish if you run out of energy you'll typically head back to cover as punishment for not properly managing your meter, but just think about that for a second. In Vanquish, your punishment is you have to play a cover shooter. Brilliant. Cover is just for those who can't pull these mental movements off, and that's fine. If someone can't manage jetting around enemies, they can get comfortable with playing it safe before becoming a true lad. The difficulty isn't just defined by how long you have to stay in cover each fight. Vanquish is a third person shooter with a safety net. Most of these numpties are safety nets without the trampoline. Platinum encourage you to get out of cover because you can't activate bullet time without some form of movement. You gotta pull it at the end of a dodge, while you're zipping across the field, or with the dead dedicated jump out of cover move which gives you height and bullet time. It's like the game's telling you to get out from that waist high wall and start cutting some shapes. Not only is the basic roll much faster with less landing lag, but by boost cancelling into a roll, you gain a load more mobility that accommodates staying out of cover for quick reflexed trigger happy mofos. Hmm, I could sit here like a spanner and toss an EMP before shooting and falling asleep, or I could chuck a grenade, jump the fence, shoot it at just the right time, and then smack this toaster into the junkyard. Oh yeah, and then IGN says, Since Vanquish is about using cover, consider this penalty as a warning to use more cover in the future. Yeah, I mean, okay, sure. You'd think this absolute mad one skating onto the scene would set the lads straight, make them get their act together, start being fun. But no, these plonkers that followed it soiled any kind of legacy it might have left. Other games do have small nudges to get you moving around cover a bit more, but it's not so special. Binary Domain had the opportunity for some good stuff. You can cap them robots in the legs to slow them down or shoot their heads to make them turn on their buddies. I thought the idea was to make only the protagonists use cover and have robots just swarm them. That way it's almost like a third person tower defense game where you have to deal with replicants by the crowds, hitting them where it counts to more effectively slow their approach to your snug little haven. And the game occasionally does this, but a lot of the time you may as well be shooting average Joes rather than these lifeless machines. Gotta say, I think the wretches in Gears of War take the cake, bland as it may taste. Not only was it nice to see dudes my height getting represented in games, but the way they rush your cover prompts some quick reflexes in taking them out ASAP. They don't have any kind of hitscan weapons either, the fact they just slap you around means your slow movement isn't a complete non-option like it is in a firefight, but it can still be tense when they force you out of what you've come to know as a safe zone. Same kind of thing applies to the tickers in 2, mans rush at you like a suicide bomber on wheels, so you have to remove them at a distance, especially when you're preoccupied with some other folk. Spec Ops sort of has the reverse, where occasionally you need to bite the bullet and make a dash. Ammo's pretty scarce in Dubai, so sometimes you gotta bum rush and pick up a downed foe's weapon and then get back into cover to start pulling your weight again. But with Spec Ops' clunky movement and very patient weapon pickup, this is much more tedious than it is fun. Oh, but Turbo, that's the point! Nah, you're chatting breeze. So while this may not be as sick as your options in Vanquish, I do prefer it to the grenades method Uncharted used before it started experimenting with loads of destructible cover in A Thief's End. It's a consistent threat you have to deal with, rather than just a prompt to move to your nearest cover and keep doing the same old business. And then Drake's deception comes in all like, okay fine, grenades are a bit shallow, how about we just spawn enemies behind you, that'll get you out of cover. But I mean that's just... 
No. This is starting to sound like a bad video game. One or two enemy types that run towards you or the use of grenades wouldn't even be worth mentioning in a good shooter. These games should be chucking twists like this all the time. I swear, I am really having to stretch here. Situations where these are used in an interesting way are few and far between. Most of it is still so boring. God damn, is this ever gonna end? Vanquish is the best of the bunch in this regard because it has both borderline suicidal enemies and the means to make out of cover play work thanks to your character kit. It even ranks you based on how much cover you don't use. To some though, this may look like fixing a problem by avoiding it entirely, by making the optimal way to play not using the mechanic in question. As if this mechanic was never fun. But it's by far the most exciting thing out of these jokers, because all the motivation to get out of cover is right there in your moveset. Like, if you're gonna force players to use cover, you may as well do something with it. All I see here are a bunch of missed opportunities, chances to use cover for something novel once in a while. There's gotta be some kind of way to make this cool, right? Vanquish makes use of its robots with these little dudes that unfold into mobile cover for enemies. So then you can boost over and kick it out of the way to get at the guys hiding behind it and it's just... Oh! Video games, man. Without spoiling anything, the final boss also has some sneaky shifting cover going on, kind of like this sequence near the very end of Gears of War 2. But holy crap, the one game that barely necessitates cover actually uses its premise to do something cool with the concept. Yeah, crazy, huh? Uh, Spec Ops has the whole breakable glass and sand thing that could tie into cover if it was ever in the game. You know, you could cause a small avalanche to swamp some cover before enemies get there, so now they're left out in the open, but that would also mean that you won't have cover by the time you get there. It's, it's not much, it's an idea at least. Oh yeah, there's a baffling lack of this in Quantum Break. I mean, if you want to make a cover shooter, fine, but there's so much you can do with a premise about manipulating time. Throughout the entire thing, you have these chaotic time stutters as stuff zips back and forth, but they never extended this to the cover system. What about cover that occasionally pops in and out, and then to effectively remain safe you gotta go back and forth between them while evading fire? This wasn't in the game, right? I, I don't remember it being there, but it has to be. I mean, it's so obvious. They kind of have this with the cars, but they don't zip back and forth. They're basically just explosive cover that comes back after like five seconds. Throughout the game's downtime you have to reverse certain events or freeze them in place to progress. Could you not have tied cover into this? No? The first gameplay demo even had this kind of stuff. Jack manipulates a frozen car crash to take out some baddies. The cutscene is still there, but the mechanic isn't? Steady on, don't want to make the game fun now, do we? I mean, Jesus Christ, even Uncharted had a more creative cover set piece than this. Who was in charge of this game? The only modern series I can think actually uses cover for some mechanical goodness is the propagator of this madness, Gears of War. Because from 2 onwards, the split second you move into cover is faster than regular movement, if you keep starting then cancelling it, you can zigzag your way around the map at mark speed. It reminds me of the boost dodge from Vanquish, but unlike that mechanic, here it's endemic to the cover system. You can't just mash, you have to angle yourself away from cover to cancel the slide, using a little pre-planning to map out the route you'll take. It uses a commonplace mechanic meant for limiting movement and turns it into this mobility upgrade. It's quite mad, even if I'm not very good at it. Cover actually raises the skill ceiling rather than bringing the roof down. But this was a sort of rocket jump situation, where it wasn't intentional, but once players found it, the devs were cool enough to just keep a fun hidden mechanic. And while I'll always have respect for developers who'll keep cool tech whether it's intentional or not, it does just raise the question of why cover systems became so prevalent. Wall bouncing may be praised by fans of this one series, but that's clearly not why it got adopted by so many other titles. All those games weren't looking at these mad flows for inspiration, they were watching this, and whether it's realism or a result of those surrounding factors, I find little reason to push such a dry gameplay concept to the forefront. I try to stay positive about the potential for mechanics I may not enjoy, but honestly this just is not interesting enough to justify it continuing to come on these nights out. Cover lets you sneak around and flank enemies, but that can also just be done with tight, maze-like arenas. It's more console friendly, but you could just have more generous aiming zones. It lets you avoid taking damage, but that's more fun against dodgeable projectiles anyway. Unless it's balanced well with a more active mode of playing, this mechanic is rarely just a crutch, but puts the whole game in a wheelchair 
wheelchair, and I struggle to say this change has been for the better. Luckily now a lot of games seem to be drifting further away or even mocking this design trend as they find new ways to incorporate fancy movement into their kits. But for a while this was the norm and while I am glad to see it start to fade, it still lingers on. Ultimately that just makes me sad that it stuck around for so long yet did so little with it. For reference, this is Kill Switch. It may not be a huge critical success, but it was a novel experiment at least. A foundation for some neat tactical shooters. But looking at it now, 14 years from its release, can you really say that potential has been realised? Big shout out to all my supporters on Patreon for being a huge help with this video. These cheeky lads down below are the lovely $5 backers who play a big part in making larger videos like these possible. I struggled quite a bit with this script, so I also want to thank the YouTubers who offered to read through my script and, you know, tell me I was on the right tracks. I'll put them in the description too, so check them out. It's better than checking out, you know, Gears of War.